So I've seen this really, really awesome kind of hollow text or like masking text effect around a lot. Being able to put the background or a picture into text or having the text like punch through a solid color to see something revealed behind it. And I think we've actually got quite a few inquiries of how to do this in Kittle. And so I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I have a just a project open. This is just a 1920 by 1080 artboard. And I've got some lovely text on the left. This font is Blinds Audience. It's one of our newer fonts that we've uploaded and looks great. I'll definitely be using that in a lot of stuff. Then we have this solid color on the right that I can move around and you can see these flowers behind my little box there. So if I was to scale that in, you could see all of those lovely flowers behind this text. So let's learn how to do that now. I'm just going to draw a new artboard. And then I'm going to find some sort of picture that I can use that I know I want to be displayed in the text. This may be confusing. Why are you starting with the picture and not with text? But that'll become apparent pretty soon. So I'm just going to type in city. Uh, because I just think that it'd be cool to have some text that says city with a city punching through the text. So we're going to take something like this, scale that up. And you also have the option if you would like to, to use this as a background. So it just kind of clips to your canvas and then uh, you don't have to run into where you keep continually selecting the wrong thing. I do that all the time and it's one of the things that frustrates me greatly. So you can use your picture as background as well. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab a basic shape and scale that to fit the canvas. Maybe just scale it. I like to scale my shapes up past the canvas just so I don't have any weird edges or anything. I do it in any design software that I work in. Then I'm going to change the color to white. This is dependent upon like what color you want this to be. So if it's like, if you want it to be blue with text that says city with a city behind it, then your, your color square here or your shape or whatever it is needs to be that color. So you need to have that in mind when you draw your shape initially. Then I'm going to add some text. Let's find a nice sans serif font. I'll just go with Accelerator. It's right there. It looks kind of futuristic and city-like. And I'm going to size that up and place that in the center. Now, next, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select the color of this text and make it some bright, obnoxious color. It could be red, it could be green. Let's just go with red. You could make it bright blue. We're gonna make this red. Something very, very distinguished from whatever the color is you're removing. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to download this as a PNG. Then we can either get rid of that. I, I wouldn't recommend get, getting rid of it because you might need to manipulate it. So I'm just going to hide those two layers. Next, we're going to go and grab that PNG that we just exported. So I've just gone and grabbed that PNG here. And as you can see, I can just use these little guides, super duper handy, and size that text up here. Now, before I go any further, it is important to note that you are now working with pixels and not vector. So my recommendation is to do this in a, an adequate enough canvas size to where pixels are not going to be an issue in whatever case this design that you're creating is going to be used. If it's for an Instagram post, most Instagram posts are like 1080 by 1350 maybe double that pixel size and make it you know 2160 by whatever the equivalent of 1350 doubled is i didn't finish college whatever then when it's in a, it's applied in that use case you're not seeing pixels but if you have you know a 1080 by 1080 canvas and it's on a big old 4k monitor and you're zooming in and you're working on it and you're like why is it grainy or like why is it pixelated it is because like it literally is pixels so like 
pixels, regardless of how high resolution the picture is going to be or the graphic is going to be, at some point when you zoom in is going to be pixelated. It's just a, more about use case. So now that we have this imported, what I'm gonna go do is go down to photo filter and click that tab to add it. And then we're gonna use this remove color feature, use the color dropper and apply our color, whatever color we made the text. And then we're gonna use this intensity slider to get rid of that red and you can play around with it. If you turn it all the way to 100%, I found that it kind of starts to make the edges look a little grainy, but it really does get rid of all the red around like 90%. So again, if I zoom in, this is gonna be pixely and it just is because it is pixels. Like it literally by definition is pixels and this is not a very high resolution image. So you have to determine like what you're using this for. So if you want to not have to worry about pixels or anything looking pixelated, just make it like 3000 by 3000 or something or 3000 by 5000 or, you know, if you're doing this for print, you definitely need to have a larger canvas size. I find it's a lot easier to make the projects larger and then have them scaled down to print versus like, you're never gonna wanna ever try to scale anything up because that doesn't work. You can scale down, you just can't scale up. So let's do this one more time. We're gonna copy and paste this R port over and let's get rid of this by choosing a different background. Let's just say, let's get a picture of grass and we'll scale that up and we'll use that as the background. So now that has replaced our other image as the background. And let's try some different colors. So I'm gonna go with a another square scale that up and let's make it like a nice off black, nice muted black. And then let's find a fun script font. See if we can stretch the limits of this. Let's just use luxurious script and we'll type in grass. Arbitrary, of course, use whatever words you need to use. And then just like we did before, we're gonna make this our obnoxious, bright, easily distinguishable from the background color. Now we are going to just download this PNG and same as last time, we are going to re-import it. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna hide these layers. Maybe I wanna manipulate them. Maybe I wanna change the color. So here is that PNG re-imported into my project. Now I can do the same thing. I can go down, click on photo filter, remove color, color dropper, select that color and turn the intensity up. And now you have this kind of cutout effect. I'm gonna take this a step further just for fun because I can already see getting comments of like, how did you get these two to be like the same size text where you have the one text on the thing and the knockout on the right or how do I do that with like a poster, do it too color this and have some text and then have, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So I'm just gonna copy this artboard down, but we're gonna start from scratch, delete, delete, delete. And we're gonna find a nice picture of flowers. We'll just use a different one just for kicks. Something like this is great. You can use it as the background. I'm just going to scale it up on my canvas. Hit T, I'm gonna get that same lovely blinds audience font in there. And I'm gonna say something like, look at all the close that line spacing like mad that's way spaced out let's do something like that it's looking nice now i'm already noticing that there is like slightly kind of difficult legibility with some of the bright colors in this photo this isn't technically part of the tutorial but i'm just going to go and knock that down a little bit and you could just make your life easier by using a photo that's better suited to have white text on it. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just gonna keep it the way it is. The next thing I'm going to do is grab a basic shape and the guide should pop up, yep, right there to let me know when it is halfway across the canvas. Same thing, we're gonna make this white. I'm going to copy and paste my text over, holding option and then clicking and dragging. I got that comment. We're not able to do the same things that you can do. You can, you just have to hold option first before you do it. All right, let's make sure that that layer is on top. Lovely flowers. Cool, those two text boxes are in line. 
looks great. That text looks centered in that white box. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna hide it, we're gonna take this, we're gonna hide that too. Now we're gonna export just this, just the whatever the side of the canvas is that has the background and the text that needs to be knocked out, we're gonna export that, just that side. So I'm gonna click on my artboard, download, and then re-import that. That has been imported back in. Now you can delete these if you're super confident. I'm just gonna go through and turn them off. And so the cool thing here is though our design only takes up the space of a square, like half of the frame, or I guess it's technically slightly a rectangle, you can still see the edges of the full PNG transparency included. And all you have to do is center that on the artboard. So now we have this lovely space right here that our illustration goes and that our text goes. So what we can do, same thing as before, we're gonna go down, click photo filters, remove color, hit that red color, and there we go. Like I said, might bode well to pick a picture for this that you know increases your legibility. I don't want comments on my professional opinion is you should use a picture that's darker so that you can see the white text. I know, like I know, I get it. But this is just a demonstration to show you how this Kittle hack works. I, I, I do know that this text is difficult to see on this. So the key here, please, please, please try to work in a larger canvas size than you need so that the pixels don't become an issue. The way and the reason that text does not look pixelated before you export it is because the Kittle editor in and of itself is vector with anything that can be vector. Most of the elements there are vector. Any elements that you can change the color of, they're vector. So you can scale into the canvas and you're not gonna see edges, you're not gonna see pixels because it's not pixels. Some of the elements are pixels. If you click an element and you can't change the color of it, those are pixels. If you use a picture, those are pixels. If if you export something and re-import it, those are pixels. Anytime you use pixels, you're gonna see pixels as soon as you zoom in far enough to see them. So my advice, use a little bit bigger of a canvas than you need to to achieve this effect. Then once you re-export it to your desired size, you're just, you're not really gonna be able to notice it. It's not gonna be that big of a deal. I super hope that this little tip, little kittle hack tutorial was helpful. If it was, drop a comment down below and let me know that this was helpful. If you're not yet subscribed to the Kittle YouTube, do me a favor, take the one second, go click that subscribe button so you don't miss anything Kittle related at all. And if you're not a Kittle user, we have a free plan for you over on Kittle.com to try today. If you're a free user currently, you wanna beef it up, you wanna step your game up, you wanna get some more of those premium features, some of that AI stuff going on, use the promo code in the description of this video to get a percentage off your pro plan or expert plan. Thanks again so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.